You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Today, I have a special guest. I have our newly elected state representative from the east side of town in West Bridgewater and one precinct in East Bridgewater and current Ward 6 Council, Michelle Dubois. Hi, Welcome, Mark. Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming on TV. So you happy to be here with you. You and I have been talking about TV for a long time, and we're going right. to get you on more. You so have you a can really great job. Form your constituents. I love my job. Right. This is a great place. But we're communication central, okay? You're, you, you don't have a, the radio station anymore. You no, still have don't. the newspaper. But a lot of people watch cable. A lot of folks, especially senior citizens that are homebound. Yep. Um, we bring events to people's living rooms. We want them to go to the events, but if they don't go to the events, they can watch them on TV. My mom watches them all, calls me when she sees me. Your mom is a sweetheart. She Your is. Mom, I love uh, her. Every Veterans Day, Memorial yeah. Day, all the parades and everything, she's out there in, yep. in, in her finest. She's in, uh, she's in the Women's Auxiliary at the VFW, and she marches in the parade in honor of her um, brother, who died in Korea, who was also a Brockton resident. Mm, so interesting. It's a special thing for her that she does for her brother. So let me ask you, um, how are you juggling two jobs now. I know you worked a full-time job right. for uh, South Coast Legal Services, mm -hmm. right? And you worked and worked and worked for that. But now you got the Brockton connection for the City Council in Ward 6. You got the State House connection. You're taking the training. You're now a, a, a commuter on a train. Yes. And you got to experience all the good, the bad, and the ugly this winter. Right. So how are you finding the jobs? Well, I love my job. Um, and it's funny because I'm one of the only state representatives that actually takes the MBTA, even though it's one of the most major issues that's going on right now in state government is the reform of the MBTA. Um, a lot of the decisions are being made by people that really don't take it. So it's funny. Um, some of the decisions that people are floating uh, from a commuter's perspective. But um, I love my job. The commute is fine. I have been driving to Fall River uh, for four days of the week, usually for South Coastal County's legal services for the past four years. And I don't really like driving commutes. So I get to sit on the train, read, talk to residents that I bump into, and you know, anyone at home, I encourage mm -hmm. them to introduce themselves to me if they see me on the train, and we can chat about what's important to them. Um, because I find that if I can talk to someone and, you know, ask them how they think things are going and if they have any advice for mm -hmm. me or things that they want to see done, it just rounds my, um, my goals and what I want to think, um, put more emphasis on at the state house when I hear from people in my district about what's important to them. So I really like it. Um, my day job at South Coastal County's Legal Services before I was elected um, was pretty intense because I was one person um, in, a, in a department of one and raising, trying to raise a lot of money for a good cause. And so I had been working like maybe 60 hours a week. I mean, I'm sure you work way more than 40. And so, um, and being a city councilor. So when I was elected state representative, I thought mm, maybe this will be a little bit less stress because I'll be a state representative and a city councilor focused on the same, you know, not all the same community, but all of Ward 6 is in the state rep district. Mm -hmm. so, but, you know, it's been a lot of hard work and a lot of learning and a lot of um, meeting new people and figuring out strategies to build relationships that are going to benefit the district over the long term. So I love my job, but it is definitely a huge learning experience. And I love it, and I'm grateful that I'm able to take part at the state level in, in government. Now, we have numbers up on Channel 12 so people can get a hold of you. But why don't you tell us, and we'll put it up on the screen, best way to get a hold of you and you have an aid. I do. So my aide is named Becca Glenn. She's she's wonderful. And um, I, th I would say the best way to get a hold of me, you can email me at michelle.dubois and then the at mahouse.org. So it's M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, period D-U-B-O-I-S at mahouse.org and um, or you could call my cell phone 774-274-1344 my office number is a little wacky right now we're trying to figure that all out okay um, but it should be 
it should be fixed by the end of next week, and maybe I can forward that along, and you can run that along the bottom too. But yeah, so for right now, my cell is fine, but I do have an office number. It starts with six one seven, and they're just trying to figure it out right and now. It has a main number. I think it's the it is the main number. Twelve yeah. hundred, yeah. because you're in the bullpen when you're a new freshman elected. I'm out of the bullpen. Oh, you're now. out of the bullpen. Yes. Where are you? Yes. Tell us. It's I should have a telephone number. There's just a glitch in the system. We just discovered. No, so you're in a different office. Yes. So I've been moved. All the freshmen, which are the new state representatives, have been moved. My office is in Children, Families, and the Disabled, which is um, room 147. So if anybody is at the State House and they want to visit me, they can come to 147, and either myself or my aide will be there to welcome you. Um, and I love it. I've got a little cubicle. Um, my aide has a cubicle next to us, and there's a window in the next cubicle, and I'm right outside the door of the Vice Chair of Children, Families, and the Disabled. His name's um, uh, Rep. Aaron Vega. He's from Holyoke. Mm -hmm. So a lot of his issues are issues that I'm concerned about too because they're cities with um, minority immigrant, low income, middle income, and some affluent people. So there's a lot of similarities between the two. So it's nice to work with him around issues that we find important. Um, and so I'm um, in Children, Families, and the Disabled right now. And, and that's the committee you're on, right? I'm on that committee, too. Okay, what are the committees? Because reps get assigned to different committees. Yeah. And it's based a little bit on your interests, so mm -hmm. probably a lot on seniority, I would right. think, in, in terms, because, you know, certain committees people strive to get on, and then, of course, they try want to be a committee chairman because they yes. get paid a little bit more. Not but only to get paid a little more, maybe some of your bills will have an easier time passing, right? I mean, that's, for me, like when I'm at the state house and people are like, what do you want? And I'm like, I want my bills to pass and I want to get money from my district. And then they say, well, that's what everyone wants. But that's not necessarily what everyone wants because a lot of people want vice chairmanships, they want chairmanships, they want these different, you know, gravita. I, I'm really focused on trying to make relationships in my first year. Um, I do have six bills. Uh, and I did put in earmarks and ask request for funding for the city and I am working on um, trying to get more funding for education and um, summer jobs but all of that stuff is in the process and really nothing I can announce right now. Mm -hmm. But um, I asked to be on Children, Family, and the Disabled and I got that. I'm really happy about it. I think I'm going to be able to do a lot around that um, as well as Brockton. A lot of our issues uh, have to do with, um, you know, DSS, children, issues, you've school, all, you've education. Always, you've always been like when I went to the Community Connections Open House, the Family Center, when they moved, you right. were there. I, yeah, Those I are care your about issues. That. Right. Those are the issues you care to care about. You're still a city council. I can't say cared about because you're right. still a city right. council. But those are issues you cared about, fought about, right. and it kind of pushed you right over to begin. Yeah, and it really is from my upbringing. You know, family was very important to my parents, and life wasn't easy for us. And as a result um, of the struggle, my family is really tight, even now as adults. And um, it's I see that no matter how much money you have, if you can have a lot of support and a strong family structure, your children and the parents can live happier, healthier lives. So that's really where the focus is for me. So I'm on that. I also asked to be on um, the bonding committee. So they do they deal with the whole capital budget mm -hmm. and bonding and expenditures across the whole state. And luckily, uh, State Representative Michael Brady, who's kind of the dean of our delegation on the state representative side. Um, Senator Kennedy is the real dean of the Brockton delegation. Um, but Michael has the most experience and he's the vice chair of bonding. Okay. So it's really nice to be on that committee with him and be able to work with him and learn more from him as well as the other committee members. And what's kind of neat is the bonding committee has made up a lot of South Coast people. And we all have a lot of bonding requirements and wants and mm -hmm. needs. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll be able to work together to get more capital infrastructure jobs um, and projects done in, our di in this district in Brockton, West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, and the South Coast overall. Mm. Um, so there's children, families, bonding, um, public service, and that deals with all public unions and state administration and finance. Makes sense. And so unions, four. 
you have a strong union background, okay, SEIU, you had strong union support. In I had race strong union for, support. For, for the yes. state representative seat, so that kind of, kind of makes sense to me. I've never seen more pieces of paper in terms of bonds when we bonded for Southeastern. Right. We had a great system because the Mass School Building Authority so uses a penny on the sales tax, and that's how we were able to renovate the school without passing any of the cost on to any of the cities and towns Isn't in the nine great? districts. But I was the chair at the time, and I got to sign all the bond documents, 25-year bond documents, and stacks and stacks and stacks of paper. So, but it's all important. We got a very low interest rate. So the, right. the bonding and the and, and, and if it's done right through the state and it's planned right through the state. So, see, I didn't even know that about Representative Brady that he was on that committee. I knew before. I think he was public safety, if I remember right. With and I think that he was um, either a vice chair or acting chair of Ways and Means last year um, when one of the people that were in the seat got sick. They the asked Mike to step up oh, okay. and do that for the time being, which was a real great thing. Um, and it was good for him and good for our district. So I think it's a good spot that he's in, and I'm happy to be there with him. And, you know, we have so many bonding issues right now, especially around Massasoit Science Center. Mm -hmm. And there's some worry about that as well as the downtown um, collaborative we think it's going to work out but you always have to be careful when you're coming to the end of a bonding cycle and yeah. your project isn't yet done so well, both there's of those some are pretty important the the, the massasoit one has been in the works for years right and the downtown one in my opinion is going to revolutionize downtown right Brockton. If we you need look them at both that, that drawing for what's going to happen with that building and how it's going to be lit up and and fabulous mm -hmm. and, and you know i've been saying forever UMass Brockton. Right. It's great to have UMass Boston and Lowell and Dartmouth, but to have UMass Brockton, and then to have all three of the colleges actually cooperating and collaborating with each other. If you think about it, our infrastructure downtown, you have great new businesses that have just came right. in here, like Alvarez, where it's right down the right. street from where nice college students are going to be. Okay. Now we need the bookstore back in Brockton. Right. We need the movie theater back in Brockton. Mm -hmm. We need all sorts of stuff, so I have a feeling that's going to help. Now, Again, I want to go back. How, how can you juggle this? I mean, city council, if you're a ward councilor, ward councilors get the calls. Okay? They're at-large councilors. Right. They do a great job. They are citywide. I remember the senior Paul Stadensky, may he rest in peace, saying, uh, uh, directory information is call your ward councilor. He right. used to say that right. all the time. Right. He'd take the call, but he would say that. Okay, right. And his son is a ward councilor. The ward councils get all the calls. If the dogs are barking, if the street's not plowed, if the trash isn't picked up, all of that. And you've been there for 10 years. Right. So I get a lot of phone calls. I am a brand new state representative, and there's one other female um, Democrat, new state representative, Christine Barber from Somerville. And we'll talk, and I'll say, how many phone calls do you get a day? And she's like, well, I get a couple. And, you know, I'm counting more than 10 every day. Um, and I, I think it's a good thing. You know, people are still calling my home number mm -hmm. <laughs> more than my state rep office number where I actually have someone to answer the phone, but that's fine. Um, I got into politics from a real grassroots perspective, and so having connection with people and people feeling like they can access, be um, accessible and they feel comfortable calling me, um, that's all what I want. So I can't complain about it, but there are a lot of phone calls. And um, Brockton has a lot of needs and the people here have a lot of needs because they're, you know, it's a city and cities have problems and, you know, towns do too. But I mean, I get calls from people in West Bridgewater and East Bridgewater as well now. So I'm in it for this reason. The reason I'm in it is just like I grew up in a family that struggled and we weren't super wealthy and there were problems and um, we were, you know, pretty not wealthy, to be honest with you. And so um, I grew up with a community helping to solve a lot of problems. So now as an adult, having this position, I want to use it to be able to help people um, like me and my neighbors who life isn't perfect and it's never easy. And sometimes they do need to reach out and get a little help from the outside. And that's really what I see my prime job is as state representative and it was a city councilor. So I really encourage people to reach out to me. Now, you're, we're, we're tail into June, heading into the summer and everything. Um, issues that are important to you as a city councilor before you're done with that job, okay? I know you've been working on, there's a, a solar field issue and traffic issues over in Ward 6 that you probably want to put a bow on before you're done as a city councilor. Do you want to talk about any of those? I know zoning's going to come up in Well, there's July. a lot going on, so... Um 
this is a little complicated, but right now there's a person that owns property um, that's all woods off of um, North Quincy Street, and it's zoned R1C, which is residential, only single-family homes, and it's the most restrictive for single-family homes. You can't build multifamilies there. Um, and they want a variance so they can cut down the trees and put up a field of solar panels 30 feet behind um, established homes that have been there since the 60s. And when the people purchase their homes, and some before, um, they purchase those those homes knowing that the woods may go away, but if they go away, they're going to have single family home neighbors. Um, not in a million years when they purchase their homes do they think someday the woods would go away and there would be um, a solar panel field next to their house. So on July 14th at 7 p.m., the Zoning Board of Appeals is going to be discussing that to see if they will issue a variance for this gentleman. My concern is that as soon as that's issued, every other person in Brockton that owns a piece of land that's R1C, residential only, is and that um, wants to monetize it right away is just gonna try to put in solar panels. And I don't think that's good for anyone. It's not good for the orderly development of that neighborhood, and it's not good for the city of Brockton. So um, I'm against that, so that's one thing. But that's kinda new, it just came up recently. Um, there's the intersection at Boundary and North Quincy Street that was rated F for fatalities that we have appropriated last year $1.5 million onto the transportation bond bill to fix, but the governor has to release those funds and there's worries that he may not do that. Um, and if that doesn't happen, it's on a list to get funded through a state um, program that pays for the installations of lights and rotaries, but that could be another six years away. So that's something that I'm working on. Um, and there's always park development I'm trying to get done, so I'm working on trying to get some more funding to uh, fix the basketball court at McKinley Park. That's a state budget issue. Right now it's in conference committee. It came through the House budget. Didn't make it through the state, but uh, the Senate's budget, and now it's in this conference committee where the the state, the House, and the Senate, our representatives, kind of argue about the things that were different to see if it will go through to the final passage. So I'm trying to lobby to get that money for a new basketball court at McKinley Playground, which is in between Winter and Hovenden. Um, and I'm also working on rezoning land uh, that used to be the old Remova Park to C7, which would allow for a sports complex. Um, and once it's rezoned, uh, the mayor is in support of this idea. We're considering putting that land out for sale for a sports complex, uh, soccer fields only. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a long way between now and then because we have to get it rezoned, then have a community meeting with all the neighbors, make sure that they're on board with it and they think it's a good idea, and then go through the RFP process. So there's that, and then there's always the specter of the casino. Mm -hmm. And so if the casino comes, um, I have a plan to try to move the casino to the CRX rail line over by Elliott Street um, and, nor and, nor um, and North Montello. Do you know where that is? Yes, I do. Um, they call it Tent City now. Right. So in there. So right now, um, the school is 45 years old, and it's kind of sinking into the ground. And at 50 years old, the state building um, funder will fund 80% of the construction of a new school for a town like a city like Brockton and they won't pay for land appropriation or for the 20% of the cost. However, if the casino comes, they're going to have to give $68 million a year to a community impact fund and the city could ask for funding for that purpose. And then Brockton would get a new school, new playgrounds, and it wouldn't be across the street from the casino, which is a, was a big concern to many of my constituents. Mm -hmm. The people that live in Ward 6 called me and said, I don't care about gambling, I have no problem with it, but I don't want my kid going to school across the street from a casino. And then the people in Ward 5 and Ward 4, who I don't represent on the ward level, but a lot of them I do represent at the State House, most of them had the same concern. They didn't. They had no problem with gambling. It was really just about their children, which harkens right back to the reason that I ran for office, this community de development and respecting parents' rights um, 
to make decisions about what happens in the day-to-day -day life of their children. So those, that's, that's a little bit of a pipe dream and really far off, but it's something that I'm, I'm excited about if we could get a new high school. And the sports complex has also been something that people have talked about right. for years. Like if you look in Bridgewater, there's the, the, the indoor soccer field uh, that's right on 18, right. stuff like that. Um, so you, you get a lot on your plate and you've learned quite a bit. Well, it, the I mean, sports you, complex thing, we've been working on for a long time because when I right. first got into office, there was the idea of putting the sports complex over by Tukas Park right. on a brownfield site. Right. And that kind of fell through, but we had rezoned it. So that's why I mean, nothing is locked in because I really thought that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if this happens, but I have learned a lot. Like I'm, my predecessor in my city council seat was, was Donna Daly, who I love. I, I love all the previous Ward 6 city councilors. They're just great people, real rabble rousers. And so I've been meeting with her lately about some projects that she has and some ideas and it's really great to talk to her but it's interesting because she knew me way before I became a city councilor and so we'll talk about issues and she's just like wow you've definitely learned a lot and changed your perspective on a lot of things mm -hmm. so I'm more patient now okay definitely patience and is tough that's a tough one for me I have mm -hmm. a hard time with that and I understand that things take a lot longer than we want them to. Mm -hmm. And now I know that it's actually a good thing because some that means bad things don't get pushed through really quickly and you have time to make them better or maybe stop them. Um, and I've also learned the art of compromise a lot more than I had when I think I first came into office as 10 years ago. So all those things I'm thinking are going to serve me well at the State House because it's a different ball game up there. You know, at the city level, you're on TV every day week and you're one of 11 and you know you can throw bombs and make good 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 forward momentum by doing that mm -hmm. and making sure everybody at home knows what's happening so they can get invested in government and tell their elected officials how they feel at the state house you're not on television and you're one of 160 people so if you can't find consensus and a way to work with folks even when they are from the total opposite side of perspective then you may get um, inoculated and that just can't happen so now as someone that uses the T and had experienced what you experienced I mean, because you hit your term right when all right. the bad stuff was happening. Do you feel that it might be heading in the right direction? I mean, the governor changed the whole strategy. He has kind of an, an oversight board. That whole board went away. I, I saw Steve Grossman was appointed to that right. board, which to me is an encouraging sign. Oh, he's great. He yeah, was Steve's about great. transparency right. and accountability and all that stuff. Do you think they're going to fix that mess? Well, this is what I think. I had taken the train for like 12 years in and out of Boston before I got this job at South Coast County's Legal Services because I'd wa worked in Boston. And then I got this job and I started taking the train in and out as state representative. And then the winter blew up. And so I decided, you know, Luckily, I'm not going to get fired for being late for work, so I continue to take public transportation, and I'm quite savvy, so I would try all the different modes to figure out which one got me there faster. Some days it took me four hours to get to work, um, just like a normal person, like anybody out there it would take because of the winter and the, and the snow and the the trains breaking down at Braintree and you having to get on a bus and then the bus taking you to the T. It was like, it was very crazy. Um, and then that was over, and I feel like what's happening right now at the State House is there are a lot of people, and they're kind of not letting this crisis go to waste. So there definitely needs to be more investment in the T. There definitely needs to be um, better management of the T. But a lot of the data that first came out of Baker's um, administration about the number of days that the employees um, of the T are Colin sick, that was all debunked. Like he used time when people were serving our country in the number of how many days they were out that year. That That is not what normal people use. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're on um, a paid maternity leave, you shouldn't be using that time. This We want to know how many times did this person bang out, like just call in without being responsible about it. If someone gets really sick and they're on, you know, um, 
on extended leave, I, I don't think that that's appropriate. And then um, there was also the costs, some of the cost ratios that they were quoting, saying that the Massachusetts system is so much more expensive than other systems. They weren't judging the same modes the same way. So they would use, um, say, uh, San Francisco's public transportation, but they wouldn't include their um, their bus system. But they used Massachusetts's bus, bus system to figure out the ratio of cost. So there was a lot of cherry picking of numbers there. Um, and I really don't agree with the governor wanting to get rid of um, the Taxpayer Protection Act. The Taxpayer Protection Private, Act. Privatization, is that what yeah, you did, Pacheco? Yeah, it's sometimes called the Pacheco Law because okay. Senator Pacheco from Taunton got it passed when he was a state rep. But it's really called the Taxpayer Protection Act. And what it says is if government ever wants to privatize something over a certain dollar amount, I want to say it's five hundred thousand dollars. It could be. I could be a little off there. They have to go through an analysis through the uh, state auditor's office, right. Auditor Bump, who's right. who's got a good connection to Brockton and has been a really good auditor. Then she looks at the the projected costs if we keep it inside government and the protection cost if we put it outside government and comes up with, is this going to save us money? And if it's going to save us $1 and not going to decrease our services, then you can privatize it. But the problem is, it's not going to be cheaper to privatize uh, the MBTA. And Governor Baker says he doesn't want to privatize the MBTA. So if it's not going to be cheaper, in my opinion, and, and it's it's not what he wants to do, then there's no reason to circumvent it unless that's someone's not really being 100% apparent with what their intentions are. So I'm really concerned about that because we have really good union paying jobs. And when I say really good, $38,000 a year, these people are not millionaires. And we're talking about potentially privatizing the jobs of many people, hardworking people that live in Brockton, West Bridgewater, and East Bridgewater, and not privatizing you get to keep your job. Like maybe they don't get to keep their job and they're replaced by a different crew of people. Mm -hmm. So I'm really concerned with, with then what happens is you get rid of this Taxpayer Protection Act, which requires open, transparent government, and then this quasi-governmental body group that you were just talking about that Steve Grossman was just appointed to, get to make all the decisions without any um, governmental analysis if it's going to save money or not. And so the appearance of impropriety is there, and then if you just want to take the next natural step, if you have five people around the room and we're all deciding that we're going to privatize, are we going to privatize to our friend's company? Mm -hmm. Whose company are we going to privatize to? And then what chess pieces are being moved around the board. So I'm really concerned with anything that takes away transparency in government and the usurping of this uh, Taxpayer Protection Act would. And so that has been a focus for me just at the State House because, like you said, I care about unions. I care about unions not because, like, I think I was in a union for nine months when I worked at the mm -hmm. library during college. Not because I'm a huge... I was in a union, not because uh, any personal connection, but I know that unions um, are really what built the middle class here in the United States and all around the world, and they're also what keep workers um, from, you know, allow workers to have a weekend, allow workers not to um, get killed while they're at work because they have a say about what's safe and what isn't safe, allows people to have a job that's not based on if their employer decides they like, you know, the color dress I wore today or not. Mm -hmm. So unions are a really important um, aspect of our, our social structure, especially at the level of financial um, income for my district, because you don't live in the 10th, so I don't mean like I own it, but the 10th right. Plymouth district that right. I represent, there are a lot of middle income, low income people, and a lot of the jobs in that, in that strata, if you can have a union job in that strata, it's gonna pay you more mm -hmm. than if it's non-unionized. So that's a real concern for me. And so what I think, I think I could solve the MBTA. It needs financial investment, it needs to get the right apparatus to get in and out during snowstorms, and we need better management. There's no reason to outsource a bus driver's job over that. Doesn't sound like rocket science. I think you right. got to figure it out. So maybe, what's that, the Transportation Committee? Maybe yeah, but that's I'm a the freshman. They're You're not going to listen to me. Like, I, I'm letting everybody know how yeah. I feel. Let and it, I tell everybody, this is how I feel. You can take my idea. Well, Do with it as you will. If you think about it, as you said a few minutes ago, all those people that preceded you in Ward 6, they were all fighters for, for Ward 6. Right. So you've taken the fight from Ward 6 
to the state house. Right. Okay. So we're going to have you back. We're I would going to have love you it. update more, and uh, we we even talked about your own show. I want I want a show. Okay. So we'll 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 meet over the summer and we'll get it done. Thank How's you that? so much. Okay. Uh, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.